often quite uncomfortable with change for all sorts of understandable reasons. This can lead them to resist it and oppose it. I resisted closing down my office of 14 years and moving all my business activity into my home here. I get it. A transition model was created by change consultant William Bridges back in the 1990s. Bridges' transition model has helped several clients I've worked with in the past and is actually helping me through this transition right now. The main strength of his model is that it focuses on transition, not change. The difference between these two is subtle, but very important. Change is something that happens to us, even if we don't agree with it or want it. Transition, on the other hand, is internal. It's what happens in our mind as we engage with the change. Change can happen very quickly itself, while transition usually occurs more slowly. There are three stages in Bridges' transition model. One, ending, losing, and letting go. Two, the neutral zone. And three, the new beginning. We go through each stage at our own pace. For example, those who are comfortable with the change or doing what they want to have happen will likely move ahead to stage three quite quickly, while others will linger at stages one or two or vacillate between them. We enter the first stage of transition when we're first presented with the change. This stage can often be marked with resistance and emotional upheaval because we're being forced to let go of something we're very comfortable with. My office of 14 years, for example. At this stage, people experience emotions such as fear, denial, sadness, anger, uncertainty, certainly a sense of loss, sometimes frustration, disorientation. But I have to accept that something's ending before I can begin to accept the new idea. If I don't acknowledge my knower-judger feelings, those feelings trying to keep me in my comfort zone, I'll likely struggle throughout the entire change process. In my case, I developed and created this change on purpose, so my motivation for getting through it is relatively high. In the situation where a transition is thrust upon us, not of our own volition, we often fear what we don't understand. So the more data we can take in about what's around the corner and how we fit into it, the likelier we are to move on to the next stage. In that next stage, the neutral zone, we can feel confused, uncertain, impatient. Depending on how well we're managing the change, we may also experience a higher workload as we get used to new systems and new ways of working with things. Most of my office, for example, is still in boxes. And the extra effort required to find the stuff I need when I need it makes me acutely aware of this neutral zone. I've also heard it referred to as chaos. One cannot ignore that this stage exists. It's certainly part of the process. So some folks here might begin to feel resentment towards the change. Low morale, productivity issues, anxiety about their role or their status or, or even their identity, and skepticism about the whole exercise in general. But again, there can be quite a difference between being here because of a self-induced change decision and an externally applied one. Either way, this stage can be one of great creativity, innovation, and renewal. This is a great time to encourage oneself to try new ways of thinking or working. As I work through the aforementioned stuff, I find myself reorganizing and eliminating, and it's fun. The last transition stage, the new beginning, is a time of acceptance and energy. It's a place for us to engage our learner researcher and test and try new things. By now, we've begun to embrace the change initiative. We're building the skills we need to work successfully in whatever this new way looks like. We're starting to see early wins from our effort. At this stage, we're likely to experience high energy, openness, learning, renewed commitment to pushing through. When it's all over and you're sitting in your newly designed and tremendously efficient office, or fill in the blanks here, take time to celebrate the change you've gone through and reward yourself for all your hard work. However, I know I can't become too complacent. My knower judger can still make me look over my shoulder, second guess myself, slip me back into previous stages if I think that the change isn't working for me. I'm reminded of a quote from Alan Watts. The only way to make sense out of change is to plunge into it, move with it, and join the dance. I'm Kim DeMott, corporate co-driver 
And this is another moment of clarity.